As a project manager, you must bring together a team and lead and motivate them to achieve a common goal. To build such a team, project managers must possess a combination of skill sets. These include knowledge, experience, and above all, interpersonal skills. While knowledge and experience are important, interpersonal skills are what really matter when building support and loyalty in your team. Interpersonal skills or soft skills include listening skills and empathy, negotiation skills, persuasion and influence, and group facilitation. In addition to interpersonal skills, a good project manager must demonstrate leadership, the ability to influence factors that affect their project, and they must make sound decisions. Involving your team members in establishing some ground rules will help you gain commitment from the beginning of the project. Some examples of ground rules you may want to establish for meetings may include be punctual, come to meetings prepared, every voice counts, and only one person is allowed to speak at a time. Teams are made up of different individuals, often from different backgrounds and different cultures, who are brought together for a common purpose. Each individual has to be committed to that common goal. Team building activities aim to foster good working relationships by increasing the comfort level of each team member in working with each other. This is especially important if team members don't know each other. The main goals of team building are to build trust, open communication, and leadership within the team. As a project progresses, teams go through various changes in their dynamics. American psychologist Dr. Bruce Tuckman famously classified the lifespan of a team into five stages. These are also known as the Tuckman Ladder. Forming is the opening stage in which team members are just meeting each other. They are usually more reserved and formal towards each other. During the storming phase, the team begins to work together. It is normal for conflicts to emerge as individuals vie for power and status within the project team. By the norming stage, the team is more settled, with members knowing and accepting the roles in the team. Productivity begins to increase. At the performing stage, team members trust each other and work very well together, making it the most productive phase of the project in terms of output. Adjourning is the final stage and involves completing the project and breaking up the team. You may experience turnover during your project or find that you must replace a team member. Keep in mind that personnel changes can result in a regression along the Tuckman ladder. For this reason, removing a team member should be a last resort if training and conflict resolution efforts are unsuccessful. One of the most important aspects of team building is motivating your team to perform well. One way to achieve this is through recognition, giving team members credit for the work they have done. Another very effective motivator is determining appropriate rewards. Rewards can vary depending on the context and person or group to be rewarded. Some team members may value financial reward, while others may prefer recognition or opportunities for development. Some conflict is inevitable in any project. Conflicts may arise over resources, schedules, priorities, costs, as well as different personal work styles. Conflict is not always a bad thing. It's natural and forces the team to search for alternative approaches and solutions. It's unresolved conflict that's bad and can have a damaging effect on the team and on the project as a whole. There are five common approaches to handling conflict on a team, ranging from least to most effective at achieving long-term solutions. Withdraw, avoid. Withdrawing or avoiding involves retreating from an actual or potential conflict situation. This approach is counterproductive because if you don't work through a problem, the project will suffer. Smooth accommodate. Someone who takes a smoothing or accommodating approach to conflict tends to downplay conflict, often to prevent arguments or ill feeling. Ultimately, it is only a temporary solution. Compromise or reconcile. 
Compromising involves both parties meeting each other halfway and giving something up. This approach is often seen as providing only lose-lose solutions, although it can provide a way to move forward. Force or direct. Forcing involves pushing one viewpoint at the expense of others. So this results in only win-lose solutions. Someone who's forcing might say, look, I'm in charge, I've made my decision, and we're sticking with it. Collaborate or problem solve. Collaborating focuses on working to combine multiple different perspectives into one shared perspective. This approach allows for an open dialogue between team members, which will help lead to general agreement and commitment to a solution among all team members. The best technique to use depends on the nature of a situation, although collaborating is usually most effective in achieving long-term solutions.